just trust that it'll work out perfectly. Well, maybe they'll be nice yeah. enough to give you an hour for the barbecue and then have the board meeting. Yeah, yeah. I, just, I just have to sit with Doreen as she uh, rec reconciles all of the money and the donations. Uh, so if, if she does barbecue, then I'll do barbecue. But if she wants to get to work, then I'll get to work. It's all good. Yeah, well, okay, okay. Today, talk, uh, uh, Reverend Penny is doing God and Drag. And the oh, that's right. is, is Tina Meek. Oh, good. We love Tina and God and Drag. I cannot wait to hear this. I know. What <laughs> a It makes me sound up like drag racing, like in the car. Oh, I had a <laughs> different version of it in my mind for some reason. Maybe maybe it's it's a description of all the faces spirit expressing as a godhead in all kinds of of spiritual cultures. Yeah, that's true. I think Buddha, um Shiva and Ganesh and I was I was Jesus telling uh, Mark uh, when I was in India they have all kinds of gods and goddesses and there's like there's like beautiful temples on almost every block and they get up at 6.15 in the morning and start uh, chanting throughout the, the town. And uh, But they only believe there's one. They're just like the different faces of that. Right, That's right. So, all of this is wonderful. I love it. Yeah, we'll I, see with what Reverend Sidney surprises us with. And I know in the uh, on the church uh, website, there's the reference to the Ram Das quote that uh, you know every time he meets somebody he thinks there's there's uh, God and drag. So I uh -huh. it won't surprise me if, if it's connected to his um, his experience, uh, especially uh -huh. the people that we have difficulty with. Ah uh, yes. yes, but it's, yes. A good, it's a very good topic. So how is how is the renovation project here, James? Where are you at with it? I know you're making great progress. Well, we repainted the stucco a second time, and it's now a color that I like. And uh, the wooden beams of the screen porch roof in between the garage and the house wings. So I'm pleased with that. Excellent. Um, we're going to talk about there's no access to the windows from the inside. There's either furniture or built-ins or storage. So they say they can do the window frames, which are in pretty sad shape, um, from the exterior. Although I just found out that my the head honcho for the paint team um, ended up in the hospital with high blood pressure. So I heard from the contractor and uh, as we we're gonna talk about that next and the gutter guy is somewhere in there and then someday when Blair has the uh, time frame that he's not torn in 90 different directions he gets finished with my front porch extension design uh, refinishing Okay. So there's still a lot of way, long ways to go, but it's it's, it's in progress. But I'm glad the uh, we we hit a color. I found one that when they showed me beat the one I didn't like and the one I did on on the wood that we were going to cover for the screen porch beams and uh, inner roof. I went like the new one. It's exactly, it matches, it matches the house stucco. So now, probably both Blair and George have been talking me into getting the whole house painted. So now at least I know a color it will get painted in. Excellent. Well, that's uh, a big project. Well, first things first, and that's whatever is next. Yes, yes. Uh, Barbara, can you check to see if um, we're going to start on time? Because if we are, we have 10 minutes. 
So I'm going to take that as my cue to go ahead and pray us then. If everybody uh, can just settle in, just settle in and turn within. And take a deep, loving, spirit-filled breath in. Just feeling the presence of God flow through every cell of your body. And know that God is all there is. One power, one presence, one principle. Ever-present, all-knowing, all-powerful. With those qualities of light and love, wholeness, joy, beauty, wisdom, peace, and grace. This is the truth of the universe. And all of those qualities are the truth the true qualities, the absolutely true qualities of who and what we are. I know that I am an individual Situation. Right now, there's two dates that I think are still on the table in August. August 21st, they're both Sundays, August 21st or August 28th. I haven't heard whether there's been a final decision yet. On, um, uh-huh. Did on you it. hear that uh, the book fair is just going to be on the 10th? I think yes. they realized that they were biting off way too much to chew for a barbecue and a book fair at the same Sunday. Yes, yes. I think your I, I think your instinct is probably right on that. Yeah, I, I found struggle. out when I I found out from Reverend Sydney when I delivered five half-filled grocery bags of books. And... Oh, bless you! Thank you so much. And then nice going to have Gary Graham. Yeah, that's Saturday the 9th. But then you've got some barbecue on July 3rd. And as Carrie James was saying, then the book sale on July 10th. And, and Gary's service on the 9th at 10 a.m. 
Yes, uh, are you going to go to that, Gary James? I'll be there in person, yes. I, oh, I was good. very, very fond of Gary. He was very special. He was my Sunday hug. Oh. Ah. I used to yeah. call him my my white-haired handsome man. Ah. You know, like the song, Brown-Eyed yeah. Handsome Man? Well, he was yes, my white-haired yes. handsome man. Yeah, what a spirit. What a uh, sense I, of humor. I yeah. love him dearly. Yeah. Yeah, well, it'll be nice again as a community for us to be able to come together and, and celebrate again, celebrate. Yeah. So I have a, an early notice. Um, our our women's group, um, the first Sunday in August, is going to feature Reverend Trisha and uh, practitioner El Cid. Oh, good. So we're like welcoming the group from Spirit Works. And um, Trisha, I hope you invite anybody else who's with Spirit Works. It's kind of like a welcome, a little, nice little welcome thing, and they can yeah. more new friends at our church and. I think it's going to be lovely. Outstanding. When Barbara, when is the when's the meeting? The date and the time? Do you do you know? It's um, the women's group, and it's going to be August seventh. Oh, okay. okay. August seven. Is that at eleven? Do that? Does the women's group meet at eleven, or is it at one? It meets at one. One. Okay. Excellent. <laughs> How wonderful. Yeah. Oh, and John. Wanting them, I thought I'd get them in earlier. They've been here for months and months, but it's like we have all these. When, so if there's a barbecue, it's always the first Sunday of the month, and that's always the So we do that instead because a lot of the women's group supports our barbecues by bringing food and serving and that kind of thing. So um, uh, there were two. There was. The one in May, the memorial, and now Fourth of July. So, but worth waiting for, Reverend Trisha. <laughs> I'll be on vacation, so you know. Well, that's <laughs> right. She's it's, she's it's so it's, wonderful. She's going to be in from up north. Yeah, and then Elsa yeah. will be in, in person. We'll get to hear more about them, and I, I think it'll be really nice for all of us. Um, just as a note, uh, we did get word, everybody, that we're starting on time. So that's two minutes from now, 6.50. Okay. So we're going to slowly start to transition to get ready for service. Um, but again, just another thing to pique everybody's interest. I, I think you've heard about, is it Shea Ernest, the French dinner, a fundraiser that's happening on Friday, July 15th. So again, like Carrie James was saying, we're just jam-packed in the month of July. Anyway. I got my ticket. Excellent, excellent. Well, I'm going to be there, and I think uh, Nirut is going to go with me again. So we'll we'll have Good. a great time. I do think it's lovely that we have such a wonderful social schedule. You know, just so many fun things going on, and people getting back together again. And um, I think it's it's wonderful that everybody feels comfortable that they can wear a mask. I mean, they have to wear a mask in in in, in the sanctuary. But outside, yeah. you can wear one or not wear one. And, you know, just, just, um, I think we take care of everybody this way. Oh, we just got word we're being delayed five minutes. Okay. So we can still visit a little bit. 6.55 start time. Yes, exactly. It doesn't, it's, it's feeling like we are slowly getting back to normal. Oh, okay. I'll be back in five minutes. <laughs> oh. Okay. We'll look forward to it. Jim and your red shirt. Oh, yeah. Okay, and uh, anyway, I'm, I'm sticking around. <laughs> the topic tonight is God and drag, Jim. So, what have you done? What have you done to represent God and drag? Is it just well? I'll tell you what, I, I, I almost decided I didn't want to come to this one because of the title. <laughs>
Now, you know, the genesis of this, based on the, 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 web, the church website, is it's a famous Ram Das quote, and I suspect that Reverend Sidney will... It'll give us more background about. Oh, I, 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 yeah, I'm, 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 I'm sure there's going to be value in this. Yeah. Uh, the you Rob class is awesome. We are all so excited. Very good. Albert, welcome. I saw John there. Did he step away? Is he going to join the service? He said he wants to be back for the, the, the talk. <laughs> okay. <laughs> One of those hyperactive guys just never can sit down. <laughs> multitask, multitask. Very good. Right. good. Good evening, Barbara and Marcy and Ian. Jeffrey Paul Whitman is in the house, everybody. Oh. Oh. Welcome, everybody, to Wednesday service. Oh, Jeffrey Paul, look at that background. What are you in a cathedral or something? Yes, I am. It's a cathedral. The cathedral of. The Cathedral Whitman. Thank you, thank you. It's my professional look. Oh well, it's it's a good look. Thank you, thank you. The T-shirt is not, but that is. <laughs> you, you just need one of those Zoom filters that'll have you like in a tux or tails or something like that. That's all you need. I do need one of those. Thank you, Mark. <laughs> anyway, Thanks welcome everybody. everybody. Did I say hi? I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay. Thank Good. you. <laughs> Bless you guys. Bless you guys. There's Dorothy. Hello, Dorothy. Hello, Dorothy. Yes, yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah. A lot of people don't realize <laughs> that. <laughs> yeah. It's <just> crazy. <laughs> but Jeffrey's got his own thing going. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's the big ass love and light. Yeah, right. <laughs> Fun always begins when Jeffrey arrives. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, I certainly you. like to have fun. What's welcome, that, Mark? I said, uh, welcome to Deanna. Welcome to Linda. Uh, for folks that are just joining us, you know, we normally start with the meditation at 10 of 7. Uh, but we got word that uh, they needed an extra five minutes in the sanctuary. So we're starting uh, the meditation at 6.55. So I assume the service will start at 7.05. So we have a few more minutes to visit before we begin transitioning into the, the oh. meditation practice. Thank you, Mark. Thanks for the update. Thank you, Five. <laughs> You know, this is interesting, um, Mark. My computer says 654, but my phone says 652. What do you have? My computer has 652, and my... Oh, yeah, it's like, I mean, I'm 653. So another minute.
watching us in person via Facebook Live and Zoom. For those of you who are here in person, please take this moment to ensure that your cell phones are off or silenced. We begin our Wednesday evening service with a pre-service meditation, so I invite you to get still and close your eyes. As we play, I am remembering who I am, chant. You may choose to chant along with it or simply follow along silently, repeating this mantra to yourself. If your mind wanders, simply bring it back to this mantra. I am remembering who I am.
Gently bring your awareness back into your surroundings, into your bodies, and as you feel ready, open your eyes. Welcome to those of you who have joined us while our meditation was in progress. We're so glad to have you here or virtually wherever you may be. Sam Krieger and our guest soloist, the wonderful Tina Meeks, are going to lead us in our opening chant. Lovely, lovely. Thank you, Tina Meeks. Let us join together in prayer. Right here, right now, wherever we are is our holy sanctuary. And I know God, spirit, light, love is present at all times, all-knowing, all-powerful, ever-present. This indwelling spirit that surrounds, embraces us, supports, and sustains us is the life we live. The one God, the one life, that life is my life now. Truth, beauty, harmony, balance. Grace and joy are all part of who we are by virtue of our spiritual DNA, that blueprint that makes us co-creators in our own life. And by virtue of that, we are personalized personifications and indwelling spirits, each of us. So I claim and affirm and I know and sense and feel that each of us are blessed by the loving embrace of this warm God. Tonight we are supported in a Surrounded with friends, the tech team that makes this possible, our beautiful musicians and soloists, our lovely Reverend Sidney, who will deliver the sermon on high, will bring the word to you, and each of us hears what we need to hear. Each of us takes with us as the night ends and we go out into the world what we need to take with us. And we are blessed by being here together, for a rising tide lifts all boats. And I know that we metaphorically and figuratively hold hands together and know that we are blessed by being together amongst others seeking the same indwelling spirit, the spirit of life, of givingness, of being assured that all is good and only good can come from whatever we endeavor, wherever we go, whoever we meet, and whatever we do think and act upon. I am so blessed and so grateful. My heart is full to know that each of us are full of this grace, and each of us are blessed beyond measure with the peace that passeth, passeth all understanding. I know that God is here, present, surrounding, supporting, and sustaining all of us. And so I release this word into the law of mine, knowing it is so, it is already done. I let it be, I say it is so, and together we can say, Amen. Please join me in saying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and glory forever. Amen. Look 
look at my face I know the years are showing And look at my life Sometimes I don't know where it's going Don't know much But I know I love you And that may be all I need to know. Look at these eyes. Oh, they never see what matters. Look at this dream, so beaten and so battered. I don't know much, but I know I love you, and that may be all I need to know, so many questions I try to get the answers. I climb and I climb and I still can't get the view But when I look inside me That's when I feel so clearly The only truth I'll ever know Is it now or love? In my soul, I know love is our salvation. I don't know much, but I know I love you, and that may be all I need to know. And in my soul I know God is my salvation I don't know much But I know I love you And that may be all I need to know Say it, I love you. <laughs> we all love you. Let's say it. We love you. <laughs> oh. 
Well, welcome. I'm Reverend Sydney. I'm the assistant minister here, and I'm so glad that you are here in the room, in your own room. I am just digging it. So thank you for being here. Um, so I have a question for you. Do you think that God hides from us? There mostly knows. I would agree with you. Um, but I'm quite certain that we try to hide from God, right? So in the myth about Adam and Eve, and yes, I did say myth, you might remember that God was looking for the happy couple after they had eaten the apple. And you know what? I had an apple on the way to work today, so <laughs> take that. Um, they were ashamed of their nakedness, so they hid, right? which is kind of funny when you think about it, that they're trying to hide from something whose center is everywhere and whose circumference is nowhere, everywhere present, everywhere equally present. They're, I'm gonna, I think it's kind of like when little kids do this. Yeah. You can't see me, ha, 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 you can't, uh-oh. So I, that's kind of what I, what I think was going on there. Um, the American mystic and teacher Joel Goldsmith often referred to God as the infinite invisible. And I use that a lot because it just uh, it fills my, my entire being with a sense of, of deep presence. But I think that we have a kind of amnesia. In fact, in the meditation song that we sang, the chant at the very beginning, I am remembering. And it's to pierce the amnesia that we have when it comes to remembering the allness of God. We fall into the thinking that God is the selective invisible instead of the infinite invisible. We forget that God is all and all is God. So Ram Dass was also an American mystic and teacher, and he famously said, treat every, everyone you meet like God in drag. Treat everyone you meet like God in drag. And of course, my absolute favorite quote about the idea of being in drag comes from another American mystic and teacher, RuPaul, <laughs> who said, we are all born naked and the rest is drag. Aww. Isn't that great? So I like to have some context, so I was looking up some history and etymology about the word drag. Um, first of all, the definition, it's a type of entertainment where people dress up and perform, often in highly stylized ways. Well, this is LA. That could be anybody. Um, the origin of the term drag, though, it's interesting. It's uncertain. The first recorded use of drag in reference was in reference to actors dressed in women's clothing, and that's from 1870 in um, England. And it may have been based on the term grand rag, grand rag, which was historically used for a masquerade ball. So there's some history. If you ever go on a game show, just you know, <laughs> log that in. So Adam and Eve tried to cover themselves. They tried to hide their shame about what they had done. And what we know about shame is that it can make you want to hide from everything and everyone, especially yourself. And by extension, by the way, especially your divine self. So Adam and Eve, they basically had this one big issue, I think. They believed they were separate from God. And in that separation, their entire sense of worth and value was up for grabs. Anybody ever been to that place where your worth is so defined by, by something you feel you've done wrong, or maybe you've done well, but there's still, it's, it's not fully anchored in, in a deep place so that regardless of the storms, and there will be storms, regardless of that, you still know who and what you are. So they attached their value to a power outside of themselves. And in doing that, they lost the capacity to see the truth about who they were. When you and I don't see the truth about who we are, we don't have the capacity to see the truth about anybody else. So Adam and Eve represent that part of us that we forget. We forget our divinity. And we turn into those earthly emotions, those earthly hideouts, the earthly drag, the cover of shame, of embarrassment, because we don't know what else to do. Our oneness with all of life is subject to our knowing our oneness with God. They forgot and didn't 
choose to remember. In fact, you've heard me talk about this before, that there, is a, there are many theologians who believe that the Old Testament, Adam, because after this little episode where God's trying to find them, Adam falls asleep. He never wakes up during the Old Testament. The awakening is in the New Testament. So he goes to sleep as the human, as the Adam man, and wakes up as the divine, the Christ. And all that stuff that happens in the Old Testament, dreams, because the, the Bible is this wonderful book about the psychology of you and me. It's about what we go through. It gives us lessons for how we can react or how we do react or perhaps other possibilities of how we can react and how to think of ourselves and how, how we, you know, there's, there's this, there are similarities, so many similarities because we, we are one with each other and we have so much in common. And one of those things we have in common evidently is our humanness which can lead us to shame, embarrassment and wanting to hide. When we forget who we are, we are, we are anchored in a place of not enough. And separation from God, our good, is foundational. Foundational to those fears and our conflicts with other people, cultures, opinions, and yes, Supreme Court decisions. It's foundational because we forget that we are divine and that we are greater than this, that we are more than this, right? So we do anchor in this land, this cycle of thinking that there isn't enough. So my own experience here on planet Sydney with the land of not enough is that my attention and my fear are almost entirely stuck when I get to that land um, in a cycle, a thought cycle of not enough love, not enough money, not enough opportunity, not enough talent, not enough youth, not enough beauty, not enough fill in the blank, right? And we just cycle and we cycle and we cycle and it's very self-perpetuating. Now, fortunately, I don't spend a lot of time in that land anymore. I think I lost my visitor's pass when I started to really do serious spiritual work here. So, but one of the things I, that I just love about this teaching is what we teach in Science of Mind and in New Thought in general is that you and I are part of the infinite experience and expression of God. But in order to go beyond the intellectual knowing of God, of what that is, ah, we have to give up our masquerades that block our feeling. We have to be vulnerable, move into our feeling nature, our imagination. We have to peel off the layers of drag. We have to peel that off so that we can be willing to see, to know, and to feel a greater truth about who we are. Everybody breathe. I just want to say for a second, if the word God um, has history for you that's not positive and supportive and productive, because many people have suffered at the hands of churches, let me offer you some alternatives. You can use it as an anagram, glorious organized design. It's just we are abbreviating it, or good organized design, or call when you hear me say God, when I say God, you say, um, <laughs> I have been watching too much TV during quarantine. <laughs> but when I say God, you think life. When I say God, you think love, especially love. God is love. It is that energy, presence, and power of love itself. That is what we are talking about. So move beyond the God of personality into the God of presence. It's an extension. You can still have your God of personality, but just know that the God of presence is bigger and is that limitless field of, of potential, of possibility, of love, of joy, of that, of this love, this love. As you were saying in your opening, the warmth, the warmth of that. So. We have to give up our masquerades, our drag, and be willing to know, to be willing to know that there's something more. Treat everyone you meet like God in drag. When was the last time you treated yourself, though, like you were God in drag? When was the last time you looked at yourself and said, hey, God, I know you're in there. 
When was the last time you did that? Have you ever done that? You know, we have to remember to remember to remember. And it has often been said that the spiritual journey is one of forgetting and remembering, forgetting and remembering. And we end up remembering things that we never even know that we knew because they come from a deeper collective place of the entire human experience, right? That's, that's the greater. That's about the being willing to know a greater. That's what that is. There is a greater idea, a greater possibility, a greater presence. So even if you have years of practicing oneness and spiritual knowing, you know, sometimes it's really hard to have the strength. You know, we don't know how strong our ability is to look around at the people you're near, to look at the people out in the world or the circumstances, all the while remembering it's all God in drag. It can be hard to do that. We had discussions similar to this in my class last night. It can be really challenging if you are watching a lot of news to remember that life is okay, that we are greater than this, that we are beings who come from infinite love, that we are created from spirit. It can be really hard to remember that. And especially if you're listening to a newscaster who just seems intent on, as Dr. Mark would say, not just working your last nerve, but just freaking you out and sending you into panic mode, it's hard to remember that they're God, that they're just in drag. So everyone is God in drag. Let's just, across the board, whether we like them or not, whether we voted for them or not, they're all God in drag. Everybody is. The degree of that costuming is going to vary, but we're all God in drag. You know, years ago, I had this wonderful teacher, and her name was Helen Street, and she used to say, in fact, she taught us to say to the people and the things that challenged us, you can't fool me, God. I know you're in there. You can't fool me, God. I know you're in there. I, I know you're in there. It has served me so well. It really has. If only Adam and Eve had heard what God was really saying to them. You know, he wasn't saying, ah, you are shameful and horrible. But in this mythological story, he was saying to them, you can't fool me, God, Adam and Eve, God. I know you're in there. You're not the shameful, embarrassed beings you think you are. You are perfect. You are divine. Eat as many apples as you like. <laughs> Ernest Holmes wrote that the self that we see is what man has thought about himself, the form he has molded by his own thought. So we are that collection of our thoughts. And when we are so invested in where we have screwed up or where somebody else has screwed up, that is what we see about ourselves. And therefore, it's what we offer to other people. It is, again, that perception. Isn't that something, right? In fact, I found a quote from Emma Curtis Hopkins. And we're in the middle of a couple of classes right now. One of them is hers. Um, and, it, and she wrote this, and it cracked me up. That thou seest, that thou beest. I thought, wow, the old gal had a sense of humor. That thou seest, that thou beest. Whatever you're seeing, that's what you are. Or in other words, we, see, we don't see the world as it is. We see it as we are, right? Yeah. So she's often referred to as the teacher of teachers. She taught more than 50,000 people about the, how to use the power and presence of God, how to know yourself as divine. Um, her version of looking at people and things and remembering the God truth about them, stripping them from their drag, was to say, this too is good, this too is God, this too is for me, and I demand to see the blessing in it for me. I demand. You didn't mess with Emma. Because Emma was very clear. And I think that we all could use a big dose of Emma, right? Because it is that assertiveness, that audacity to be clear that we are divine beings. Darn it. You know, we are here as divine beings. All of us shake off the drag. You don't need it. In fact, if we look at each other and choose to see not that, but the truth of who we are underneath that, we the drag just disappears. It completely goes away. You may wonder why it even matters. You know, why, why do we care? Sydney, why are you spending so much time about this? Um, 
this whole thing about remembering God is at the center of all the people you are challenged by it is an interesting concept, isn't it? You know, because we can go through wor wor the, our lives and the world being triggered, being challenged, and being um, annoyed, and then we have to remember who we're pissed off at. You know, we've got to keep score. Got to remember, well, okay, now that person got me, that person, oh, wait, what was it about that person I don't like? Oh, I know, or even better, I don't know, but I know it's something, <laughs> right? Well, I know there's something, there's something, there's just something about them. There's something about me. So when we bring a higher knowing of God, of love, into any situation, the situation shifts for the better. So if you've been studying any of the Course in Miracles, you know that that's one of the fundamental ideas, that one of those lessons is if you find yourself in a situation where you think something is missing, love is missing, compassion is missing, forgiveness is, it's because you haven't brought it. If I feel like I'm in an exchange and, gee, it seems really tense and unloving here, it's because I am tense and unloving. I have brought that as opposed to bringing the God, right? So when we, it, it's, it's the same, and I've talked about this before, when we can see beyond, see beyond what we have assigned people as far as who they are, what they look like, or because of what we project, when we can see beyond all of that, when we're willing to do that, we, we invoke the power of blessing. And when we bless someone, what we are doing is actually calling forth not just the divine within ourselves, that's the remembering, but the divine within us is connecting with the divine that is in them and serving to remind them perhaps for the very first time, of their own unique spiritual DNA, their sacredness, their holiness. It calls forth a higher version. I love it when somebody blesses me. I feel compelled to, to bring forth a higher version of myself. Doesn't that feel like that? When you hear someone say, oh, bless you, as opposed to, oh, bless her heart. That's a different thing altogether, right? But when someone blesses, you know that there is, ah, there's an exchange of energy there. It truly is an exchange of energy. When we bless someone, it's like we're infusing that person or that relationship with divine healing. It's almost like an injection, right? An injection of spiritual possibility. Now, can you imagine, instead of being triggered by something that happens and by triggered by all those world leaders or political leaders whom we just wish would lead the planet. Come on now, be honest. Instead of that, we pictured them being injected with mega doses of pure love and pure compassion. Isn't that awesome? That's the blessing. That's the blessing. So when I was a little girl, I remember going to Knott's Berry Farm and visiting one of the exhibits there and it was really cool. Who grew up in Southern California? I'm sure a lot of you did. So you might remember this. There was this, it was really interesting to me. It was the transfiguration of Jesus from the human to the divine, to the Christ. Does anybody remember this at all? I'm sure it's not there. I'm sure it's not there anymore. It was just this little hut, this little cottage. You'd go in, there were a few pews, and you'd sit down. The lights would dim. The music would start, and it was... Beethoven's Moonlight Sonata, and it starts off very quiet and very serenely, and the lights begin to come up, and in that, we see the lights on Jesus, and he goes from being the, the human Jesus into the divine, where, you know, it, it, it's not big major tech creativity. I mean, this is 40 years ago, 50 years ago, where, where it's just, I'm sure that they adjusted the lights and they, you know, okay, we turn up the ones with the blue gels, we turn up the ones with the yellow gels, then we're going to turn down this. And eventually what happens is this Jesus, who I'm sure was also made with a healthy dose of um, glow-in-the-dark paint, you know, because that had to be part of it, but is completely transfigured. And the light is coming through him and around him and from him. And it was just such a, a powerful image and I, I, I think about it every now and then. I, I go back in my memory. 
because I think it was, for me, it, it, it's such a wonderful representation of the human being transformed into the divine, just while being there, just, just being. And it, I think it's more than that. For me, it's the realiza realization that the divine was al always there. The divine is always there. It's just the matter of calling forth that light, the willingness to call forth the light. That's where that transfiguration would come forth. And it was always really beautiful. And I remember I even bought a souvenir card and I would take it home and the light would be on it all day. And then the lights would go out and for a while it would glow and you know, my Jesus would glow in the dark. And so it was very interesting to me. When we know that the divine is always there, that is looking beyond the drag, right? Knowing that, okay, you can, you can be in drag, that's fine, but I know who you are. I see who you are. I know the light that you are. So the disciples who traveled with Jesus had no idea that he was divine. I was reading some of this history today from Rocco Errico, who was known as one of the the great scholars about Aramaic language and, and the history and all of the significance and the metaphysical meaning behind everything in the Bible. And this was just really great. So they didn't know that he was divine and that his mission was to inaugurate or to announce or truly hmm, cultivate within all of us, within all of them, a spiritual kingdom. These disciples actually anticipated that Jesus would eventually rule, literally rule, and they would rule with him. They would be on actual thrones. That's what they thought. The disciples expected, too, to govern the 12 tribes of Israel and eventually the world. So there's a lot of numerical symbology in there. There's a lot of metaphysical representation in there. But historically, the historical Jesus, this is what the expectation was. It wasn't until Jesus took Simon... Jacob and John, and went up into a mountain to pray. So the story goes is that Jesus prayed, and as he did that, they observed that he began to be transfigured, that light began to come from him, from within him. His appearance changed, his clothes became white and dazzling. And in this vision, Jesus, and they had the same vision, Jesus was speaking with Moses and Elijah. So the event of this transfiguration, according to Rocco Errico, was the first small realization in the minds and the hearts of these three disciples of the spiritual nature of their teacher and the spiritual reality of this kingdom that he kept referring to. It was when their consciousness began to break open, it began to shift. They began to realize the divine nature of their own lives when that happened. They began to have their shift in consciousness. They saw the divine behind their own humanness or their drag masquerades. And that shift led eventually to all of the 12 to recognizing their own divinity. Now that's very, very significant, you know, because it wasn't that a majority of the world became divine. It was that this small group of people critical mass, let's call it critical mass, shifted, they shifted. And the lesson for us here is that just a small change in perception, a small change can grow to become a seismic movement of consciousness and possibility. We don't have to have everybody, everybody, everybody at the same time chanting joy and peace in my heart or I am remembering or, or let it be. We don't have to have that, but is there a willingness in just this small group of people? Oh, I'm going to say this group of people here, or our Zoomers and our Facebookers. Can we create critical mass? Can we create critical mass within ourselves? You know, if we could have, you know, there's, you've heard about the 80 20 rule, you know, and, and you hear it mostly in terms of business, where 20% of people do 80% of the work. Could we perhaps convince ourselves to 80% of the time, 80% of the time, have a spiritual perception? 
So that 20% of the time, we get that time off to be snarky and mean. You know, you can, I'm going to give you that. That's human. We, you know, we're still here on the planet. I, I'm going to give you that. Or could we do 70-30? Can we do 60-40? Could we, could we at least move to 50-50, right? <laughs> 50, half the time, we're going to know that we are divine, and so is everybody else. And half the time, we're not. I'm, I am good with that because eventually the tendency will be to go towards that place that feels better, which isn't the snark land. It's not snark land, or as I like to call it, snarkasm. So for peace, <laughs> for peace and happiness to happen, or wholeness to happen in our world, we just need that critical mass. So what I know and what I believe is when enough of us start to treat everyone, starting with ourselves, as if they were God and drag, then we will become those transfigured beings. We will become those beings who have risen in consciousness and have become available to living as the magnificence that we already are. So I'm going to close with this quote from Pierre Teilhard de Chardin. Uh, and he wrote this. It's one of my favorite quotes. Someday, after mastering the winds, the waves, the tides, and gravity, we shall harness for God the energies of love, and then, for a second time in the history of the world, man will have discovered fire. Let's pray. Mm, thank you. Mm. Ah. Once again, turning within, with our collective and individual recognition that there is one power, one presence, one mind, one life, that life is God. That life is perfect. And it is the truth of our being, whether we see it or not, whether we know it or not, whether we even feel it or not, we know that it is the truth. So we dare now to unite with that truth, knowing that we are not just one with God, but we are one with each other, and that the very truth, the very essence of our being is that fire. It is that fire. It is that perfection. It is that glorious spiritual aliveness and magnificence whether that form is in the form of a Jesus or the form of a Buddha or the form of, of Moses or Muhammad or, or any prophet, Baha'u'llah, what, whatever that transfiguration is for you, whatever that model is for you, I invite you, perhaps it's the divine feminine, perhaps it's Mary, to embrace that and know that within you, within me, within each of us, is, is the divine, already transfigured, already perfect, already fully, fully developed, fully available to God, and fully whole, and fully glorious. So knowing that we share this knowing of, of the divine, the infinite divine, the infinite invisible, I speak my word now for each of us, whether we are here in this room or we are live streaming, that I know that we are fully connected in that mind, the heart and soul, the ethers of God, and that we are willing now to see the truth. We see the truth of ourselves, and then we dare to be that truth. We see it for others, and we allow them to be that truth. As we declare it, as we call it forth, as we perceive it, we experience it. We are that truth. We allow ourselves to be inspired and guided by higher ideas, perhaps that we have never even recognized or seen or felt before, but know that we are now open and willing to have them fill our very being. And I know that they, they don't just fill our minds and our hearts, but they are touching the very souls of our bodies, those tissues, those fibers, those muscles. And they are filling everything, every part of our being with light, and it is the wholeness of light. It is the light of God. And so whatever might have been a challenge before is now released and replaced and transfigured into healing, into wholeness, into the truth, the essential truth, which is God. And if someone is in your mind who is wanting more love, more healing, more, more joy, more money, whatever that need is, 
correct vocation, delight in life, movement from depression to celebration. I know that this word is surrounding and filling them as well because I know it is surrounding and filling us. We heal ourselves at the level of mind if our willingness to know that right where we are, God is, and all is well. And we particularly, we particularly in this country, we pray for our leaders. We pray for everyone in this country, particularly those who don't agree with us. And we know that all of us are now being injected with mega doses of God, mega doses of understanding, of peace, compassion, of light. And in that, we unfold into a greater knowing of possibility. We bless those leaders around the world who need that injection, that infusion of light, and we know and we see for them, and we bless them. We bless them knowing that is the true power. That is the power that heals. That is the power that changes things. That is the power that is that seismic shift so that we do move into peace on earth right here and right now. I know that to be so. I speak my word for the peace of mind and the love and the comfort and all that is needed in Ukraine. I speak my word for all peoples everywhere, knowing that they are loved, they are fed, and for children who are seen, who are loved, and who are held, because that is the world that we represent. That is the truth about us. So we surrender the drag, we let go of the masquerade, and we now step forward into the reality of our divine beingness and declare that we are we are that, we are, I am that, I am. I am that which thou art, thou art that which I am. <sighs> and nothing and no one can stand in the way of that, including us. So I know, uh, I know these truths, truths and I accept these truths for myself uh, and all beings everywhere. I accept these truths for myself and all beings everywhere. Will you say that with me? I accept these truths for myself and all beings everywhere. And I accept these truths for, all, for this church, for all churches, for all synagogues, temples, ashrams, mosques. For truly, we are just here ah, as God in drag. And we see that and we bless that in each other and we are grateful. So knowing it is so, we let it be so. And together we say, Amen. Thank you very much. I release and I let go. I let the spirit run my life. And my heart is open wide. Yes, I'm only here for God. No more struggle. With my faith, I see the light. I am free in the spirit. Yes, I'm only here for God. I release and I let go. I let the spirit run my life. And my heart is open wide. Yes, I'm only here for God. No more struggle, no more strife. With my faith, I see the light. I am free in the spirit. Yes, I'm only here for God. Yes, I'm only here for God. Yes, I'm only here for God. Amen. Woo. So now is the time when we accept your tithes and gifts and love offerings. So if you would take your love offering, hold it in your hand and hold it to your heart and say with me, from the love of pure spirit within me, I bless this gift. I send it forth to heal and bless and prosper. It is evidence of my faith and belief. It does good work in the world and returns to me multiplied abundantly. Woo, yes.
Ma'am, I don't know, I read here where you were going to thank those who have served, but... I'll do that after that. All right. Hey, I have announcements <laughs> about the receptivity and givingness of our beloved church. Take yeah, I saw the sign. I saw the waving, <laughs> backyard waving a mask, a white flag of mask. Back. Stop it. <laughs> All right. We make it easy for you to make donations to our church, don't you know? The text to give... The text to give number is inside your program and a QR code is on the back or go to nhcrs.org slash give. Prayer with a practitioner is available after service in person and on Zoom. The Wednesday evening Taze service with practitioner Joanne O'Brien, meditation 650, service at 7 o'clock. Join us July 6th for Taze service. It is a wonderful thing if you have not been. The evening will begin with a sound meditation followed by practitioner Joanne O'Brien facilitating an hour of sacred chanting, readings, and meditation. There will be a potluck on the patio, so please bring your favorite dish to share. The Japan trip with Dr. Mark, October 22nd. I'm going. Join Dr. Mark for the spiritual adventure of a lifetime. For details and sign up, visit our website today or talk to me tonight after. Pray like you've never prayed before. Rock Your Word is Reverend Sidney's brand new six-week how to Pray class that started last night, Tuesday, June 28th. There is still time to sign up for this transformational class where you'll learn a fir affirmative, powerful, and effective prayer. Sign up on our website today. Cost is $175. Required text is available in the bookstore or online. This Sunday, July 3rd, we are celebrating the holiday weekend with a free barbecue after the 1130 service. Join us for delicious food, fellowship, and music by Mary Hyland and Gilbert Acuna. Our men's and women's groups will not be meeting this Sunday as they will be helping with the barbecue. Our used book sale has been po postponed to July 10th. You won't want to miss it. There will be a celebration of life service for our beloved practitioner, Gary Graham, on Saturday, July 9th at 10 a.m. in person and on Zoom. All are welcome. Chez Ernest, or Chez Ernest, French dinner, <laughs> Join Dr. Mark for a fabulous French dim dinner, decadent desserts, and wonderful entertainment. Friday, July 15th at 7 p.m. on the church patio. Tickets are available online and on the patio for Sunday, on Sundays, for $40 each. And Zoom virtual patio before and after Sunday and Wednesday services. Zoom meditation every morning, Monday through Saturday, from 7.55 to 8.15 a.m. Visit our website nhcrs.org to obtain, obtain Zoom links and more information about all our events and to sign up for our weekly, weekly e-blasts and monthly newsletters. You did well. Take a breath. <laughs> and as if we don't have enough going on in um, July, um, although you can't, you won't be able to sign up for my class after uh, Tuesday, I am putting together a new workshop for July 23rd. It's a Saturday for about three hours. And it is called Hell in the Hallway, Light at the Door. <laughs> How to move gracefully through change into renewed and abundant life. You will hear more about that. It's going to show up on the website um, on Friday. And starting Sunday, I think we'll be able to start signing up for it. And you'll, you'll learn more about that. And it will be... It'll be fat powerful. This book is really awesome. Okay. Gail Palat has been holding vigil. And you know, isn't that great? So that when we have someone doing that, they're not just over there catching up on their sleep. They are praying for the highest good for everybody in this room, everybody who is live streaming. They are holding the highest wisdom for me and for our music. And it is sort of like the spiritual glue that just 
weaves us all together, and it's wonderful. We have Facebook Live support tonight from Dean Regan. Our Zoom support was Barbara Berg, Mark Kroll, and Ray Regan. Lights and sound, the amazing, the powerful, the magnificent Adam Keshen. Our greeter and usher tonight was Colleen Butler. Our sanctuary, yes, I know, thank you. Our sanctuary media team, Doreen Remo, Nikki Savara, Brenda Jordan, and Blair Thompson. You've got a special announcement. Hold on one second. Tina Meeks' music is available on iTunes. Tina, T-I-N-A-M-E-E-K-S. Sam Krieger is, is a rock star. Sam Crutcher, you're a rock star. Reverend Sydney, I'm just a goddess. We're, yeah, a goddess in drag. Um, we're going to be having coffee and tea on the, uh, out on the patio afterwards. I hope you'll join us. What can I do for you, sir? Well, this is actually our Facebook support tonight. Oh, okay. It is. Thank you, Melissa. Thank you, thank you. When I say Melissa, never mind. Um, <laughs> man, it's time to go home. I've been here all day. We are so grateful, and we're going to sing and go home now, right? Let's do it. Let's do it. Peter, come up and help us uh, all sing Blessed Always. Go ahead and stand up, and we'll sing together. All right. do but we start with minute miracles this is the gift from the practitioner wing of the church the healing wing of the church to offer a free minute miracle